Welcome to the first video of Chapter 6, which is Section 1, Ratios, Proportions, and the Geometric Mean. This video will cover three different topics, ratios, proportions, and the geometric mean. Ratios and proportions should both be a review, and then the geometric mean is new. So let's jump right in. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. And it's always expressed in lowest terms. So for example, there could be 15 boys in the class, but only 10 girls. Now this has to be in lowest terms. So I need to think, what can I divide both 15 and 10 by? Well, I can divide them by 5. This would give me the ratio of 3 to 2. So for every 3 boys in the class, there's 2 girls. This is one way of expressing a ratio. The second way is as what looks like a fraction, so 3 over 2. And then the third way is just to write 3, 2, 2. I would say this first way and this second way are going to be the most common way. The third way you don't see as much. So in example one, it says simplify the ratio. 64 meters to 6 meters. Well, ratios never have units, so we don't need those units. So we have 64 to 6. So I need to think, what can I divide both 64 and 6 by? Well, I can divide them both by 2, because they're both even. This would give me 32 to 3. Now can I divide them by anything again? Well, 3 is only divisible by 3, and 32 is not divisible by 3. So this is my final answer. And again, you could write it as 32 over 3, or 32 to 3. So moving on, examples 2 and 3 are going to get a little more difficult. Example 2 says, the measures of the angles in triangle CDE are in the extended ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. Find the measures of the angles. Well first, something new is, it says, sorry, it says extended ratio. All that means is that we're comparing more than two quantities. So here we have 1, 2, 3 quantities we're comparing, not two of them. Okay, so first thing, we're talking about triangle. So let's just draw ourselves a triangle. So this is triangle C, D, E. It says the angles are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. Now that does not mean that my angles are 1 degrees, 2 degrees, and 3 degrees. I know all the angles in a triangle need to add to 180, and 1, 2, and 3 certainly do not add to 180. So I need to think, what do I need to do with this 1, 2, and 3? Well, if I think back to what we did earlier, we had this 15 to 10 that suddenly became 3 to 2. We had 64 to 6 that became 32 to 3 because we divided out some common number. So I had some angles, I divided out a common number, and I got 1 to 2 to 3. I don't know what that common number is though, so I'm going to call it x. So really my angles are 1x, 2x, and 3x. And this should make a little more sense. Now I know that my angles add up to 180. So I'm going to have 1x add 2x add 3x equals 180. This becomes 6x equals 180. If I divide by 6, I get x equals 30. But the question specifically says find the measures of the angles. So I still need to substitute that back in. 1 multiplied by 30 is going to give me 30. 2 multiplied by 30 is going to give me 60 degrees. And then 3 multiplied by 30 is going to give me 90 degrees. So my angles are 30, 60, and 90. This should make sense because that, that, those three angles will add to be 180. And then if I divide out by the common number by 30, I get my original ratio of 1 to 2 to 3 again. So this looks good. Now, moving on, looking at example 3. This is very similar. A little bit different, but pretty similar. So pause the video right now and try this one on your own, please. Come back when you have finished. Okay, so you should have had a chance at this point to try this one on your own, so let's see how it went. So it says we have a right triangle, and the angles are in the ratio of 1 to 4. That means they're going to be 1x and 4x. Now I know that my angles are going to add up to 180, so I have 1x add 4x add 90 equals 180. Solving this, I get x equals 18. Then the angles are 18 degrees, and then 4 multiplied by 18, which is 72 degrees. So hopefully that one went well for you. 
If not, hopefully we now see what mistake we made. So that example ends our examples on ratios. Moving on, we're going to look at proportions. So we should probably talk about what is a proportion. A proportion is an equation that sets two ratios equal. So in this case, I have the ratio 1 over 4 is equal to the ratio 2 over 8. And generally, proportion uh, shows ratios as fractions. Proportions are solved using the cross products property. So in, your, in the past, your teachers have probably called this cross multiplying. The real term is cross products property. So from this point forward, I'm going to expect that you use the term cross products property instead of cross multiplying. So let's jump in and do some examples. Okay, so it says solve the following proportions. So using the cross products property, I have 5 multiplied by x, that's 5x, equals 2 multiplied by 8, which is 16. If I divide everything by 5, I get x equals 16 over 5. So x is a fraction, that's fine, and it doesn't reduce anymore, so leave it like that, that's okay. Okay, because this is something that you've done before, we're going to just let you try a few. So pause the video and try the next two on your own, please. Come back only after you have completed both examples. Okay, let's see how we did. y multiplied by 7 is 7y, and then I have 14 multiplied by y minus 3. This becomes 7y equals 14y subtract 42. If I subtract 14y, I get negative 7y equals negative 42. So y equals positive 6. Hopefully we got that one right. If we messed up anything, my guess is that we forgot to distribute the 14, because that can be kind of difficult to remember. If you have any questions, please make sure you bring them to class. Let's look at the next one. The next one is definitely more difficult than the first two. I have x multiplied by x, which is x squared. I'm going to guess some of you messed up right at that point. And then I have 5 multiplied by x plus 10. Simplifying, this is x squared equals 5x add 50. Now I need to move everything over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract 5x and I'm going to subtract 50. This gives me x squared subtract 5x subtract 50 equals 0. Okay, now this is a quadratic. It's been a while since we've seen these. We did solve quadratics at the beginning of the year, but it's definitely been a while. So as a reminder, we need to factor. We need to think what two numbers are going to multiply to negative 50 and add to be negative 5. Okay, multiply to negative 50 and add to be negative 5. Well, the two easiest for 50 are, are 10 and 5. If I make it a negative 10 and a positive 5, that'll add to be a negative 5. So this factors to be x minus 10 and then x plus 5. Setting the 2 equal to 0, I get x minus 10 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0. This gives me x equals 10, and x equals negative 5. So unlike the previous two, we actually got two answers this time, which is kind of cool. Okay, we have another uh, proportion example, and this is actually a really interesting example in my opinion. It's called the mark and recapture method, and this method is actually used by scientists to estimate uh, population sizes. So it says the park rangers want to estimate the deer population in a forest close to your house. They capture 50 deer and tag them all. So by tag them it means they they put a little tag on like their ankle. It says they let the deer back into the forest. Two weeks later they capture 25 deer. Ten of these are tagged. What would you estimate the deer population of the forest to be? Okay so we're going to need to set up a proportion. First thing we're told is that there are 50 deer that are tagged. And that's all they're told, that we're told. And then it says two weeks later. Okay, so this is going to be a different ratio. So this is going to be on the other side of the proportion. It says they capture 25 deer, 10 are tagged. So 10 go in the numerator for being tagged, 25 go in the denominator. So that's like our total. And then this is where our population would be. So now I need to solve using the cross products property. I get 10x equals 
1,250. If I divide by 10, I get x equals 125. So the park rangers would estimate that the deer population is about 125 deer. It's probably a little bigger, a little smaller, but it's around there. And again, like I said, maybe you learned about this in biology last year, maybe not, but this method is actually one of the methods that's used to try to estimate the size of a population. Okay, so that's proportions. Last thing that we're going to do is ge geometric mean, which is putting together ratios and proportions. So the geometric mean of two numbers A and B is the number X that satisfies this proportion. X is used twice, and A and B are on the diagonal. Okay, so let's do an example. Find the geometric mean of 12 and 16. Okay, so X is twice, that's what we're looking for, and then we have 12 and 16. And now we need to do the cross products property. If I multiply 12 and 16, I get 192, and then x and x is x squared. Okay, to get rid of the x squared, I'm going to have to take a square root of both sides. So I need to simplify that root 192. If I divide it by 4, I get 48. 4 is 2 and 2. 48 is 4 and 12. 4 is 2 and 2. 12 is 4 and 3. And 4 is 2 and 2. Okay, so I have a pair of twos, another pair of twos, another pair of twos, and that leftover three. So from each pair, one comes out. So that means I have three twos because there's three pairs. And then that three who didn't have a partner stays under the root. So my geometric mean is two times two times two, which is eight root three. Let's try one more together. So I'll find the geometric mean of 12 and 27. So x is used twice, I then have 12 and 27. Cross products, I get x squared equals 12 multiplied by 27 is 324. And now this is what I need to simplify. So I'm going to do that all the way over to the right. Square root of 324. I'm going to guess that that's probably divisible by 4. And it is. It gives me 4 and 81. 81 is 9 and 9, which is 3, 3, 3, 3, 4 is 2 and 2. So I have a pair of 2s, a pair of 3s, another pair of 3s. So I have one 2 that comes outside from the pair of 2s. I have one 3 from the first pair of 3s, and I have another pair, another 3 from the second pair of 3s. Nothing's left under the root because everything simplified and everything had a partner. 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 is 18. So in the second example, our geometric mean is 18. Okay, you have one more to do on your own, please. Pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, you should have had enough chance, enough time to try this one on your own. The answer you should have gotten is 18 root 3. So if you didn't get that, go back and find your mistake. We will go over it in class tomorrow if we have any questions.